Any questions from the audience? I have a question because I was asked not so long ago to make a presentation in front of the uh, photographers within AFP coming from all over the world and I was trying to to tell them what to do, not to do and all of that and so I, I had Hong Kong on the phone, you know, and they sent me uh, a few photos telling me, you know, this is how we see that from Asia and then I sent that also to America to our attorney over there, he had other options and in France it was treated again differently. For instance, you know, if you have um, a, pho a photography of Dominique Strauss-Kahn when he was out of jail, you know, with his uh, handcuffed, it's prohibited in France. You cannot show these kind of pictures, whereas in the States it's totally allowed. Uh, if you have a picture of the Eiffel Tower, if it's lit at night, it's prohibited in France because it's copyrighted because the architect of the lights, you know, where, but if it's unlit, you can show that. And so it goes on and on and on. And it was to me like impossible to make this presentation, you know, because I could not tell them. And we are a corporation in 165 countries. We, we, um, uh, have the photos, you know, uh, exhibited everywhere to to tell them, you know, what to do in which precise situation. And I was wondering if the IPTC or if anybody has uh, ever thought about maybe having, you know, fields in which we could, you know, uh, uh, say that uh, this kind of pictures is allowed for this kind of uh, jurisdictions or not, you know, if you if if this has ever been thought of before, and I'm pretty new in the business, so this is what, the reason why, with all these lawyers in front of me, I'd like to have maybe your insight. See, I actually thought the question was addressed to the IPTC whether the IPTC had ever considered, um, you know, putting several jurisdictions into one place to determine for which um, countries you could have unified solutions or something? Then let me try to answer for the IPTC. I, I believe that uh, our efforts uh, with RightsML are pointing into that direction. Um, if it turns out, maybe in your own um, experimentation, during this experimentational phase, that RightsML is not actually allowing you to do specifically what you would like it to do, then uh, because AFP is a, a good member of the IPTC, we're you know absolutely in the in the position to uh, work on that and hopefully solve that issue by extending RightsML to do that. Um, I, I think we are actually pretty close to that. So I would imagine, uh, and I see Stuart and Chris uh, nodding uh, profusely back there, um, that you know that might be your best solution, and uh, we should maybe explore that. Um, the examples that were brought up just now are mostly right of publicity examples where the right to use the likeness of another person is either controlled by uh, the law in a certain region or uh, or whatever the jurisdiction is in, uh, involved with the contract. If you look at the United States, um, uh, we have different right of publicity laws in each state, so it's not federal. So every single state has different rules about when a person's likeness can and can't be used. The penalties are different, the scope of usage allowed is different, the per permissions required are different. With the PLUS standards, we allow the expression of the rights, but then the parties who are actually using the image in, in, in whichever regions have to apply business rules that uh, as to how they're going to use the image under the rights granted. There might be limitations by law that affect, that can constrain the ability to make use of it. And right of publicity is a really good example because you can have um, a, a, a copyright license such as unlimited use forever in any media and for any purpose, um, even in a Creative Commons license, for example. But then if there's a person in the image, the image might not be able to be used at all for any reason in some areas. Robert from DPA, um, I'm a little bit surprised if I understood you correctly that this, uh, so all rights must be granted explicitly. So does that mean that uh, standard behavior in photo industry to say, for example, max out, US out, is from a legal point of view uh, senseless? Well, <clears throat> first of all, that suggestion came along by the fact that most countries are very restrictive, like the law is very restricted 
what you have actually granted and what not. And in case of doubt, does this form of use that you are you know, complaining about, is that covered by the license that person has actually concluded or is it not? So can you still prohibit this form of usage of your work? In that case, um, the courts will implement the license restrictively and if in, in some countries, if you haven't made it crystal clear what kind of use, like what kind of action you want the other person, what you want to allow the other person to do, then it is not covered. So you, that leads to the, to, to the funny situation that if we uh, draw a, a licensing contract, we have a long list which can be half a page of what exactly that person is allowed to do. And we will mention every type of use we are aware of, like copying and displaying and archiving. And uh, we will be very precise there because in particular, if you have such a list and then any, if you have an ex in such a long list and, and then some or a particular form of use has not been mentioned, then the courts will assume, well, that right has not been granted then. And then if that person carries out this form of use, uh, it cannot rely on its license. So from this perspective, uh, I would recommend to be very precise in what you uh, want to allow because you cannot assume that the courts will say, well, those other similar forms of use, they are also covered by the license. Then that was basically just um, the background. I, th I, th I think also, I mean, if, if you're talking about the restriction that goes in the sort of the editor's inst instructions that say magazines out or something like that, that's done in the context of a much larger license that has already been engaged in with that particular organization. So I know, you know, we have our, our editor's notes will say things like no use. Uh, you know, no use US or no use Europe or something like that or magazines out or no online use. But that's all done in the context of a full-bodied uh, contract that's already been entered into between our two organizations. And so it's just adding a slight gloss on top of a very rich licensing tapestry. Um, if you were to publish an image on the internet and put on that image nothing other than no use magazines, there are going to be, there may be courts in some places that in, say, okay, well, you said no use magazines, you're implying use on everything else. Um, but that's only in the context of just freely putting out that image to anyone who wants, uh, who, who runs across it and doesn't have a, an existing licensing relationship with you. So I think, you know, your question I think is a good one, but, it, but those editorial comments really are in a very specific kind of, uh, of environment um, that I think is not precisely what we're talking about here. I would say that the also the opposite can also be true where you constrain usage but then the laws in a particular locality can allow usages that you've um, constrained. Fair use or fair dealing is a, is, a, is a good example where despite how you might constrict something, the party might be able to use it un, un, under the law. And you know the reality is is that international licensing, uh, millions of image licenses are, going, are happening uh, a year internationally and the parties just adhere to their local laws wherever possible and, 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 and use the expressed rights as the guidelines. Other questions? Thank you. I have a question for PLUS and uh, Sep and Sepik, you have similar uh, projects with those reg registry. Um, how would you do? How how do you see or foresee the future for those two projects? Do you see it as being one for Europe and one for the US, or is it more competitive uh, between the two entities? Or uh, I have some difficulties with these uh, two presentations, which are. First of all, similar and using sim technology. I think I 
Yeah, so I think uh, it's a good question. <laughs> Um, and it's a difficult answer. Uh, probably we'll find the answer within this project we are uh, starting. I think it's um, the part of the answer is, uh, is also historical. I mean, PLUS has been um, has been around for no, I think eight years. So they've done a lot of work in terms of standardization and uh, building up the registry. And the CEPIC project um, is born was born more recently, I must say, as um, as a result of of, every, of all the new legislation, the legislative initiatives in Europe. So for us, it is very important as a trade association to present very rapidly a working solution. So you say they are similar, but there are also some differences, and I would rather put the focus on the differences. I think a plus has been is is you know is really as I say, it's a, you know, they're part of this institution, which is a very technological institution. So they put a lot of work in standardization. In our case, as far as a unique identifier is concerned, it's a federation of IDs. So in this um, protocol, what will happen with all these IDs existing, including the one produced by the Pixcot registry, which is also a registry, it will just put a prefix just in front of it. So that's, that's, that's it. So it's a very, it's a more, it's a simple approach which will be able to function very rapidly. And then we are using also working systems. So um, as I said, Getty Pixcal, for example, it's also a registry. They don't only have Getty images on their platform. The IRC, uh, Pixcot IRC is open to, they are, they are open to other kind of Im images and you can already search uh, images in there. And then, then we build, we're building the, the, the CEPIC platform. Uh, parallel to this, and then there is a plus platform. But then comes again, as I say, we're just looking at practical solutions. In a way, we are open to all existing platforms because I, I personally very I don't think there will be just one solution in this industry. So what we're really trying is to pr pr to present something which is open, democratic, and that works. So that's our approach as well. So no, this is my part of. The um, I would agree with everything Sylvie just said, except the one part where she, where she said it would be uh, uh, difficult to, to answer, because I, I really think that your answer encapsulates exactly our position as well. The PLUS Coalition is in place to support the efforts of organizations like CPIC. Our uh, registry system is uh, a hub to which uh, registries can attach. Um, there's no problem with there being hubs attached to hubs. A good example is uh, we're participating in the in the copyright hub project in the UK, and we'll supply visual uh, uh, rights information for visual works through through there. So uh, both of us have very open systems, and I see no issues of competition or 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 difficulties. Especially, um, CPIC was one of the first organizations to join PLUS and some of their members participate in the development of the PLUS standards. So I see it as a, as a non-issue only because of our mutually open um, attitudes. Other questions? 